Addiction Beyond Death, like the name says it itself, it talks about addiction beyond death, of course. Addiction can manifest in various forms, broadly uh, categorized into substance addictions and behavioral addictions. So, substance addictions involves the physical defense on a specific substance that yes yeah i'm recording with obs um so yeah substance addiction involves physical dependence on a specific substance that alters the mind states including alcohol and drugs like narcotics stimulate stimulants and um like what the doctors uh prescribe to you um also nicotine and caffeine can be addictions. Addictions are characterized by the body's physical craving for a substance, leading to compulsive use despite harmful consequences. Then we also have behavioral addictions, also known as a process addiction. So basically, it's a compulsive engagement in activities that trigger the brain's reward system. Common examples include gambling, eating, shopping, internet or social media use and sexual activities. Unlike substance addictions, behavioral addictions do not involve an external substance, but you can equally, um, it's, it's, it's like, it has the same effects basically, leading to significant psychological and social and financial problems. And so both, both types of addictions stem from a complex interplay of genetics. Uh, such psychological and environmental factors reflecting deep-rooted issues or imbalances within the individual's emotional or spiritual well-being. And so recognizing the broad uh, spectrum of addictions helps us to understand the multi-faced um, nature of these challenges, emphasizing on the needs for holistic approaches to healing that address the underlying causes rather than the symptoms. So... Yeah, this was the substance addictions and the behavioral addictions, the difference between it. And so the formations of the addictions from a spiritual perspective. So like the journey of a soul basically is marked by a series of lifetimes, as we know, each offering a unique set of experiences, challenges and lessons. These multiple experiences are not random but basically designed to shape the soul's evolution, the character and the desires. And so addiction in this spiritual frameworks are not merely pitfalls, but they are significant lessons or challenges. But so these addictions, they serve as a minor reflection of the soul's deepest needs, fears and unlearned lessons, offering opportunities for profound spiritual growth and understanding. And so, emergence of addictions is often a signal of a deeper spiritual imbalance or unresolved issues embedded within the soul's memory. So these may stem from traumas, emotional wounds, or needs spanning across various lifetimes. Such unresolved issues can create a void within the soul, which it seeks to fill or lower the effects of the active ad addictive behaviors or substances. And so these addictions are symptoms of a deeper longing for healing, resolutions and wholeness, pointing towards the soul, quest for balance and harmony. Addictions are ancestral as well, yeah. They are like, uh, what's called, generational trauma also, yeah. Okay, so central to many spiritual teachings is a principle that desires and attachments play a pivotal role in the soul's evolutionary journey. Addictions represent extreme forms of attachment and an intense craving for specific experiences, sensations or substances. Uh, powerful desires are often propelled by the soul's attempts to relieve past pleasures or escape discomfort from it, indicating a cycle of dependency that the soul is challenged to transcend. So the spiritual task then becomes one of understanding, moderating and eventually overcoming these attachments to free the soul from the cycles of desire and suffering. And so karmic influences play a critical role in the formations and it's just in the formation of addiction. Every action, decision and experience 
carries a karmic weight of some sort that influences the soul's path and the challenges it's encountering, including um, these addictions. So these karmic patterns can manifest as vul vulnerabilities, if I say that right, towards uh, certain addictions, reflecting lessons to the s that sorry, reflecting. Um, on the lessons that the soul has yet to learn or resolve. Overcoming an addiction therefore involves not just addressing the physical or phys physiological aspect, but also understanding and resolving these karmic ties, enabling the soul to advance unburdened into its next phase of growth. And so, whilst the soul's journey is inherently spiritual, it unfolds within the physical realm also, where environmental and cultural contexts um, play significant roles. And so the like family, society and culture into which the soul incarnates um, can either support or challenge its spiritual um, lessons related to these addictions. And so these external factors can influence the types of addictions the soul encounters. And uh, resources available for dealing them and perceptions and stigmas attached to addictions. So understanding the interplay between these external influences and the soul's journey is crucial for a holistic approach to address addictions. And so by exploring the formation of addiction through this enriched spiritual lens, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the complexity of the soul's journey, basically. Addictions do not merge as a mere failings or weaknesses, but as a significant spiritual marker, each carrying a profound lessons and opportunities for growth. Addressing them requires a multi-based approach, honors the souls which seeks karmic resolution and navigates the, the dance between spiritual longing and uh, physical reality. What are you guys doing in a chat? Okay, so anyway, the eternal nature of the soul's desires. Um, so in the, the afterlife reveals the soul's true essence, unbound by the physical constraints, yet carrying forward its earthly personality, memories and desires, which addiction deeply woven into the soul's narrative persists beyond death, manifesting within the spirit realm after you die. So this continuation um, serves as a profound lesson that death is not an escape from your earthly attachments and desires, but it's rather a transition into another realm where these experiences continue to shape the souls. And so it emphasizes the eternal nature of the soul's struggling um, struggles and aspirations, urging for a deeper understanding of life's challenges as opportunities for spiritual growth and evolution. That's so accurate. Yeah, indeed. Like, it only gets worse if you try to hide it or try to ignore it, basically. So this is what we are going to talk about here um, in a minute. And so the phenomenon of spiritual possession or influence in the afterlife takes on complex dimensions as souls burdened by unresolved addictions seek to vigorously satisfy their cravings through the living. And so this spiritual interaction goes beyond traditional notions of possessions, reflecting a nuance of ecosystem of energy and desire where, where entities still enshared by their addiction gravitate towards individuals resonating with similar energies. Such engagements highlights the intricate web of spiritual connection where the unresolved issues of the deceased can amplify or trigger the addictive behavior in the living, underscoring the profound impact of spiritual well-being on a physical reality. And so, so in the spirit realm, souls or entities driven by these unresolved addictions are drawn to energies and situations mirroring their own unresolved desires. Their attempts to influence the living to create addiction, addictive um, sensations, whether through induced cravings, through manipulation or emotional manipulation, reveals a desperate pursuit of fulfillment that they 
one sort in the physical world. And so this scenario illustrates the profound longing for completion and the lengths to which the soul will go to seek resolution, even if it means entangling themselves further in the cycle of the desire and the attachment. And so the influence of addiction on spirits can... Um, I'm gonna say this. So, um, spirits that are addicted, still addicted um, on things like alcohol or drugs or whatever, the influence of these addicted spirits on the living can significantly significantly magnify the challenges faced by those struggling with addiction, uh, introducing a complex layer of spiritual dynamics to the healing process. And so this relationship not only intensifies the individual's own battle with addiction, but also serves as a potential reminder of our deep inter... What's the word? Inter... Um, connectedness. How, how do you... Interconnectedness? Something like that. I don't know what the word is, sorry. I think you know what I mean. Um, so, interconnectedness across the realms. And it calls for an, an expanded understanding of healing that encompasses not just the individual's uh, physical and physiological aspects, but also the um, spiritual influences that may be at play, advocating for a holistic approach or a spiritual apo- approach to addictions that addresses the energetic ties and karmic um, implications involved in them. And so the interplay between addiction in the afterlife and their impact on the living forms, um, I don't know what the name is, like there's a specific name for it, like some kind of process where the challenges and lessons of addictions transcend individual experience affecting the collective soul's journey. And so this cycle underscores the critical importance of spiritual awareness, development in life and beyond as a means to break break, uh, free from the chains of addiction. And so it highlights the journey towards healing, liberation and higher consciousness as a shared endeavor where overcoming personal and ancestral addictions contribute to the um, collective collective evolution of humanity and the spiritual realm. And so by embracing these refined insights, we gain a deeper understanding of the complex nature of addiction as they extend into the afterlife. So this perspective encourages a more compassionate, holistic approach to healing and spiritual growth, recognizing the interconnectedness of all beings and the journey towards liberation from suffering and the pursuit of um, higher consciousness. And so healing the addictions, like first of all, we have to recognize um, the spiritual essence of addictions which marks the beginning of true healing and these steps transcend the physical understanding of addiction revealing its roots into the soul's journey past traumas and unmet spiritual needs and it's a a call to view addiction not merely as a physical battle but as a spiritual quest for wholeness and self-discovery And so the journey inward is crucial for uncovering spiritual wounds and unresolved issues that come from addiction. And so utilizing tools like meditation, mindfulness and reflective um, journaling, one can embark on a path of deep self-exploration, which this process eliminates the hidden emotional scars and (laughs) patterns fueling the addiction, setting the stage for a profound spiritual healing and so healing the unresolved issues so basically with awareness comes the responsibility to heal this phase often involves seeking therapeutic support engaging in spiritual healing techniques and practicing forgiveness and release and so it's about confronting and soothing the inner turmoil by diminishing the soul's dependence on external um, sources of comfort or escape. And so engaging in spiritual practices serves as a gateway to higher states of consciousness, liberating the souls of the shackles of these desires and attachments, whether through meditation, prayer, energy work, or worship, whatever your thing is, like these practices can elevate one's vibrational frequency, fostering a sense of inner peace and detachment from the material 
cravings. And so with this, we are building a bridge to higher spiritual realms, which invites the divine support into our healing process. And this connection, whether with the uh, divine spiritual guides or one's higher self, often offers guidance, strength and profound sense of belonging aiding in the transcendence of addictive patterns. Why do we all... Wait. Why do we all as spiritual beings have attachment to all spirit? Like me. Because that's... Like, again, it can be... Most of us say it's from the the ego. That's... Or the, the, the ego... Because the ego is in, in the third dimensional plane. And so the ego is very focused on material aspects of life and so this can also relate to addictions or um, ancestral trauma like generational uh, trauma can also play a role in this and that's why it's important to recognize this and work on this eventually so where was I oh yeah so like um, with like building the bridge to higher spiritual realms uh, and for um, inviting divine support and healing process. Um, so this connection, whether it's with the divine or your guardian angels or your guides or your own higher self, it offers guidance and strength for a, a sense of belonging, aiding in the transcendence of addictive patterns. And so addressing karmic influences is also a part of this. So by addressing karmic influences, we make a conscious effort to break cycles of negative behavior. And through patterns, it's an active engagement in um, positive action, seeking forgiveness, offering kindness and committing to your own personal growth. And so this part is not like it, it not only elevates the spiritual burdens of addiction, but it also paves the way for karmic healing. And so the journey of healing is not meant to be walked alone, like immersing yourself in a community like we have here on the server that understands the physical uh, and spiritual dimensions of addiction, provides a network of support, empathy and shared wisdom, whether through spiritual groups like this one or... Um, if you have so a community in your area where you can go to or you know friends or or family or whatever that supports you that you're close with like this collective energy can amplify the healing process for you and so embracing the healing journey as a ongoing process of self evolution encourages a mindset of openness and adaptability and it's about remaining receptive to new insights, practices and experiences that foster spiritual growth and resilience against addictions. So, in order to help others basically, uh, transitioning from healing creates a cycle of positive energy and karmic goodness, sharing your journey, wisdom and support not only cements one's own progress, but also lights the way for others and so this act of service magnifies the healing impact waving uh what's the name a um tapestry of upliftment and spiritual um solidarity and so this enriched approach to healing addictions emphasizes the power of spiritual understanding and the transformative potential of inner work and the importance of connection both to the higher self and the community it offers a holistic pathway to recovery where healing the soul's wounds leads to liberation from the physical and spiritual chains of addiction. And so so basically bringing it all together. What it, this all basically means is that like the addictions you create in this life or maybe have created in past lives stay with you even after you die. And so if you... If it's really, really bad, um, then your soul um, might influence other people here on Earth just to get uh, the, the urge back and the sensation back. So, like, they will manipulate people here on Earth that are addictive to whatever it be, alcohol, drugs, or whatever. They will manipulate them into using it again, like making them crave for it again because they 
still grave for it. And so once this person drinks the alcohol or does the drugs or whatever, like the soul still can feel like not that much, but like it it feel still can feel the effects of it in some way and still get some kind of relief from it basically staying addicted to it and in this way you can also get trapped in the uh, astral realm we call it or yeah when you reincarnate like you you will fall back into the same patterns and stuff like that and that's why it's important to recognize if you may have some addictions by meditating or writing down journals or whatever and working on those addictions and also like minding and shielding yourself from any entities that might um, use your addiction to satisfy their own needs yeah and so that's basically it i don't know if there is any more um i can say about it to be honest like if you have questions you can ask mm, let me read chats also if you guys have questions you can ask like you can talk or ask in chats or whatever otherwise i'm just going to uh, end the event here uh how do we like heal the spiritual traumas our ancestor had you know like like the attachments and everything like the traumas addictions like mm -hmm. it's yeah again yeah, we do this through also meditating journaling and uh, basically shadow work in a sense like galley um two days oh yeah two days ago yeah, yeah, yeah i was there the shadow the shadow yeah. yeah so this that that can help uh, a lot with it and of course like you don't have you don't have to do it alone like you can ask people in the server for advice or like or help or um if you have some kind of community in your area or if you can go to friends or family that can help you with it uh, so uh, one more question how do we keep the magnitude of our progress you know like even if you're journaling how do we know that that what's the magnitude like what's the efficiency of our work you know like we do all kind of meditation we never have like any efficient tool you know that that helps us you know uh, i don't i don't understand uh, the question for yeah, example so, yeah how do we keep our progress in track like it's not like if we if, like in like physical world we could see, see our work right like if you're building a if they're building a house we could see like this is at stage one stage two yeah. how do you how do we do that in spiritual realm you know um yeah so again you can do this by um trying to recognize the patterns in your life like things may not seem like an addiction addiction like for example um eating if you eat a lot like you might not necessarily think that it's like an addiction and so yeah recognizing these patterns um, in your life can help and also again shadow work is a big um, thing in discovering um, which um, addictions or other traumas you might have and how to work them on them also how to heal one more thing how do you like wh why do we all humans have nature to forget you know like each day when we like go to our next day we forget most of the things why is that like mm, that's that's a good question, actually. I don't... Um, I think just because... Um, um, so it's basically doing with, with uh, the ego and the brain and stuff. So, like, if you pay much attention on a certain thing, like, your ego or your brain will register it as not important and, like, will either, so to say, delete it from the file or, like, put it... Uh, far away somewhere if that makes sense wait i want to i'll answer your question i feel like it's because we don't like in my class how i told you like you don't fully live your life since you don't you don't you haven't healed your shadows so with that comes that you forget a lot of things because you're not fully living your life you're going basically day to day to day to day on uh, autopilot mode and not really fully being your authentic self and living your life so that plays a big part so then what happens is when you go to day to day living like that then a lot of things that you what that happened in that day they don't uh instead of being in your conscious mind they go into your unconscious mind where they are most of the times forgotten and abandoned